Okay, hello everyone. Uh, super uh, excited today to present to you the update 2.0 of my custom vehicle uh, physic. So, uh, I really don't know where to start. I just finished a little bit of polishing I needed to do before posting to the forum. Uh, by the way, the download link is going to be available to the usual link that I'll post in the description uh, shortly after the video is rendered and everything. So, uh, yeah, basically, if you see that video, it should already be onto the forum. Uh, all right, onto uh, what did I actually change in this version 2.0? Well, uh, first of all, I completely redid the uh, master class to handle, you know, physics constraint creation at runtime. So uh, you don't have to create eight physics constraints for every of your uh, vehicle, you know, set them up manually uh, and all, all the trouble that this could possibly cause if you did any mistake at all. And so uh, now these constraints are generated at beg and play and add it into arrays that are used to add torques to the right wheels, uh, etc. So you don't have to worry about constraints anymore. Uh, the next big change is that I actually used a skeletal mesh for the vehicle instead of, you know, static mesh for the body and then static mesh for the wheel. Well, one wheel that we would du duplicate to how much wheel we wanted. And uh, so, you know, all of this is all now one big mesh, uh, like it is with the, the default uh, vehicle class. So the physics asset looks like that. Basically, I just set these two values there, set CCD and the weight I want each part to have. So each wheel weights 15 kilograms and the body weights 970. And then I just basically remove all the constraints for the wheels to make sure these are all free to move however they like. And then that's it. That's all the setup you have to do for the physic asset. And then when you create a child blueprint of the master class, uh, which is this one, for example, the Camaro. Now this is the only code you have to do in your child class to get it to fully function. So, you know, we just set up the look axis for the, the integrated camera system and then the auto gear because I didn't want it to uh, hook that up onto the event tick and uh, have the parent event tick there as well. So then you hook up the steering input, throttle, brake, uh, change view, just hook up a button. Then same for the handbrakes. Uh, I've also added a little debug widgets into the master class folder that you can display or hide by pressing tab. And then, you know, the usual right mouse button to uh, trigger the reverse gear and middle mouse button to look back if camera auto rotation is activated. So here's what it looks like, handbrake, steering, suspension, see, wheel collisions, as always. And here's what that little debug menu is. So you can show collisions just to make sure if you ever want to see the collisions. <laughs> For some reason, then you can trigger the auto rotate camera from there. So, for example, uh, you keep it activated for gameplay reasons, and then uh, bugs show up and you want to deactivate it, then you can move the camera and reactivate it when you're done. Then you get to see which gear you're on. RPM, speed, and kilometer per hour, and how much FPS you get. For actually, I did that for me. You see, I get around 75 to 80 FPS. 
Uh, that's because my sky blueprint is pretty expensive. I've, uh, I've got a whole daylight system in there with time of day setup and all that. It's pretty performance heavy. <laughs> By the way, this is going to get shipped in the project as well. And so, uh, that's it. You still have the first person and third person camera. Basically, I re-implemented the camera system in this, uh, the one I showed in a previous video on my channel. All right. <laughs> Oops. So this is pretty much what it looks like. Oh, and by the way, this is a landscape I'm rolling onto. And as you can see, yeah, okay, the steering is way too aggressive and cause rolling. But other than that, the uh, the whole thing is pretty stable. Oops, that was the wrong checkbox. You can see I'm rolling on the landscape at high speed. And although the, the wheels kind of glitches out a tiny little bit sometimes, it doesn't cause the vehicle to jump or anything like that. So uh, let me actually show the speed. Oops. Yeah, well done. All right. So you can see I'm rolling a lot. Anyway, I was rolling 90 kilometers per hour and there doesn't seem to be any problem with collisions with the landscape anymore which is great. Also, uh, the suspension is much less of a problem when hitting bumps. Uh, I've played with the damping, the weight of the vehicle and custom gravity, and it, it's nearly, uh, nearly fixed. I mean, it's not really fixed, but it's not nearly as bad as it was. So there are still improvements on that but it's getting better and so uh, yeah that's it really same functionalities as before a few fuck uh yeah a few bug fix and so much easier to set up really all you have to do is go into the setup tab of parent blueprint here and set up your gears so the name you want to display the gear ratio rpm min and max for the automatic transmission you select which engine torque curve you want and then suspension all these values and the wheels what bone is it steering do you want to mirror the steering uh, in case you want to have the back wheel steering as well and so brake strength multiplier so that you can set the front wheels to brake more than the rear wheels and etc. Hand brakes as well. Uh, eventually I'm gonna add another checkbox uh, which is gonna determine whether the wheel is detachable or not. So that if you hit the wheels too hard you can break the constraints. So I'm gonna add that real soon. Uh, as for tire friction, it is still, uh, let me find it, it is still using a physical material, you know, really basic. So for example, if I just go in here and set it to 0 0.2 instead of 1, you'll notice that It'll start drifting a lot. And it's not gonna roll anymore. And it, of course, doesn't go as fast because the wheels are slipping. And so you can still, you know, adjust the tire friction to get as much drifting as you want and avoid rolling. Oh, that 
You can see that's a little excessive, but you get the idea. So uh, yeah, super simple to set up. Uh, pretty much the same functionalities, less bugs. And uh, that's it. So I'm gonna push that update to uh, the forum, post a link in the description. Like I said, uh, please give me some feedbacks. Uh, this is a pretty huge change in the system I just did and I'm pretty sure I missed some stuff and uh, So yeah, I really need you guys to uh, tell me if you find any bug so I can fix it <laughs> and uh, Oh, right. I also did not put the steering speed and steering max curves yet so uh, whether you are not rolling at all or rolling at 120 kilometers per hour, you, the steering is going to be the same. So that's going to cause a lot of rolling. But uh, yeah, I'll re-implement that uh, probably before tomorrow. I just wanted to push that update to get some uh, feedbacks as soon as I could for bugs and stuff. <laughs> Oh, and the custom gravity factor is there still. That was intense. So, uh, yeah, the, the car doesn't feel like a cardboard box in the wind when you're not on the ground. And uh, yeah, I think that's all. I'm trying just to make sure I'm not forgetting anything, but pretty sure that is it you can see still the same Camaro I uh, removed a few extra content like materials and such just to make the project smaller and easier easier to share oh I knew I was forgetting something uh, since I'm using a rig mesh with a physic asset uh, you do not need to go in the project settings and set up a new collision channel to prevent the wheels from colliding with the body. Uh, this is now taken care of. So other than the input and the uh, physics sub-stepping, if you need it, uh, you can just, you know, drag this car into another project and not worry about the, the project settings at all if you have the, the proper input for a car already. So uh, yeah, it is also a lot easier to uh, put into another project because of that. And so, uh, all right, now it's through. I've said everything. So uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.